This is part two of the lesson on story around a character. In this part, I will explain some of the words I used in the translation I made in part one. I will also suggest alternative translations. Emeka is 13 years old. Emeka de Afo Iri Na Ato. The verb here is de. De is the verb to be for adjective. Please watch the lesson on the verb to be. Adjective of number. For the number one, the number comes before the noun if it's one or if it's 100, 1000, 1 million, 1 billion, 1 trillion the number or the adjective before the noun so one year is o to afo 100 years is o to nare afo afo is year so o to afo one year but after one from two it becomes afo a boy it becomes the noun and then the adjective so afo a boy for two 13. Afo iri na ato. Iri is 10. Na is and. Ato is 3. So 10 and 3. That is how to say 13 in Igbo. So 13 years. Afo iri na ato. 30 years. Afo iri ato. Again, iri is 10. Ato is 3, which is 10 into 3 places. That's how to say 30 in Igbo. But what I want you to take note of here is that if, it, if it's not 1, from 2 onwards, you get the noun before the adjective. That is the order. But if it's 1, it is the adjective before the noun. He has a brother and a sister. O nwere otu wanne nwoke na otu wanne wanne. Here we have the verb to have. Inwe. Inwe. In Igbo, when a verb is benefactive, we suffix R and then we repeat the last vowel in the verb. So the last vowel in we is e, so we suffix r e. So we have were for have. Also, some stative verbs in English, when they are translated to Igbo, they also take the r and repeated vowel suffix. So that's why we have were for have because have is a stative verb. Were. Other examples of stative verbs in English are uh, think. To think is eche. So in Igbo when you say echerem, that's I think echerem. So you see there's R E suffix at the end. Believe is also a stative verb. When you say I believe in spirits, equerem na ndemo equerem quere quere. So the the verb to believe is equal then when you believe it is query same with to want it it when you want to say i want water i want choro choro so you have cho and then you suffix r and o choro right so those are not Pass, even though they have the R repeated vowel suffix, they are not passed, they are just stative verbs or benefactive verbs. Right? When you want to put them to the simple pass, you don't need RE anymore. So, if you watch my video on uh, verb tenses, in that video I said to put a verb in its 
is passed in Igbo. You just suffix R and you repeat the last vowel. But since this one's already come with R and repeated vowel, you don't have to add another R and repeated vowel. So in Nwere, you don't have to say Nwere. No, what you do is to repeat the last vowel in the original verb. That is the middle vowel. For example, Nwere, I had I had a brother. Will not be Nwere or he had a brother. O Nwere. Right, oh, when and one name okay, he had a brother. Now, for the indefinite article here, a a brother and a sister in Igbo, when you translate indefinite articles from English to Igbo, you omit the indefinite article, be it a or an. So, the translation here is onwere wanne woke na wanne wai so this is the correct spelling uh, correct translation for he has a brother and a sister so you omit the indefinite articles but here when i made the original translation i wanted to emphasize that he only has one brother and one so i wanted to emphasize the one so that is why i used o2 for a brother that's i said i translated it to he has one brother and one sister but if the one is the number is not the essence of the story then you simply translate it to one one okay na one one He is the eldest child in the family, and his sister is the youngest. Otto chara umu naya, wan naya wani bo nke ato chara. So the key verb here is the verb eto. Eto is to be older than someone or to be a senior to someone. And to eto, I suffix cha. Cha. Is the suffix for all all so he's the senior he, he's the senior among all of them right then at the end of child we have ra which is for stative verb to indicate that it's a stative verb so auto chara torture that makes him the eldest he is the eldest child in the family and his sister is the youngest Autochara umunea one one bunke autochara O is the third person singular subject pronoun and ya is the third person singular object pronoun. Now there are other more advanced pronouns like ya umwea ya umwea means he himself. So when you want to emphasize um the he you say he himself ya yeah, also we have yangwa yangwa is when you are narrating a story you say yangwa instead of all so as you can see ya yeah, yeah, now becomes subject no longer object so but in my original translation i said or which is still correct because that is what a beginner will know but when you're narrating a story and you are good in the language you can say yangwa tochara umunea you know this sounds more uh, original yangwa tochara umunea one one bo nke atochara he is the eldest child in the family and his sister is the youngest. If the story was first told in Igbo, the choice of words would have been different. For example, the first son in Igbo is Opara 
or okbara or okbala or okwara and so on depending on your dialect so the storyteller would have used akbara to refer to a mecca who is the eldest son we also know that in Igbo language when a nuclear family is referenced the first daughter is ada and we know a mecca sister is the first and only daughter so and we referenced Emeka, Emeka's nuclear family, so automatically the first daughter is Ada. When a family is not referenced, then Ada means daughter, which is every woman is an Ada if there is no family mentioned. If you mention just a community, like Ada, one Ada Nigeria is a Nigerian citizen, a Nigerian female citizen. But when you mention Mr. and Mrs. AGK, then Ada, since it's a family, the Ada is the first data there. And then the second data is Olo. Uh, we also know that Emeka's sister is the last child, is the last born in that family. So in Igbo, the last child is Odudu or Odunwa or Alialia or other words in other dialects so the storyteller would have used any of this if he was telling the story originally in Igbo instead of just being translated into Igbo because when you translate to Igbo you try to translate word for word in most cases but if you're telling the story first in Igbo then you become more creative and use um other words that are peculiar to Igbo language right so so for this translation we can also say yanwa bo okbara wane yanwa ni aburu odudu so as you can see even though there's family in the english version we did not bring in family in our translation so family is is in all law is in all law. we didn't bring it in in the translated version because it is implied it is implied that they are part of one family anyway so but if you want to include it then just say is in all law, and that is family ikenna his brother is 11 years old and isioma his sister is 10. ikenna one day I will care the afo irina o two. Isioma one day I want in the afo iri. So here an alternative translation would be one day I will care bo ikenna the afo irina o two. Isioma one day I want adere afo iri. Both his parents are 35 years old. Ne na naya degase afo iri ato na ise. So the verb I want us to focus on is degase. Degase. De is the verb to be. And then we suffix gase. Gase is the suffix for each or for every when you're distributing something to more than one person and you're giving it to each of them so this is each of his parents is 35 years old that is the surface gassy the translation of both in Igbo is ma ma the first one ma the second one so we say ma Naya ma naya de afo iri ato na ise. So both, when you want to say both in Igbo, it is ma. First one, ma. Second one. That's what it is. Ma naya 
ma nna ya de afo iri ato na ise his father is tall and a bit fat and his mother is slim and a bit short nna ya dorogologo ma butu ibu nna ya de tunpongbo ma nwe obere ahu so ito ogologo is to be tall ito ogologo so we said toro ogologo so is tall ibu ibu is to be fat so we say buru ibu that is fat and then when we say naya toro ogologo ma butu ibu so ibu ibu bu is to be fat Ede mpongpo is to be short. Ede mpongpo is to be short. So, ode mpongpo, he is short. His father is tall and a bit fat and his mother is slim and a bit short. Naya turogulogo, magbutu ibu. Naya de tungpongpo, ma nwe obera anhu. Ma, nwe obera anhu. We used ma twice here, so ma is the conjunction and ma wo obera and it takes the verb and the imperative form. So when we say naya toro oglogo ma butu ibu butu tu, remember bu is the verb for fat, right? And then we suffix to tu so butu ibu tu which is to or t u with the dot is to is the suffix for little little so here we're saying butu ibu a little fat emeka is tall like his father and slim like his mother Emeka atorogulogo deka nnaya ma nwe obere ahu deka nnaya so for slim in the translation we said obere ahu we would have said like most Igbo people use to to say someone is slim is say onwegi ahu that's the person doesn't have a body right so that's uh, one way of saying it but it might be easily misunderstood, so I didn't use it. He doesn't, he's slim, right? So I used Oberahu instead, which is small body, right? So when a person slims down, you say the person Tara Ahu, Tara Ahu, so it's lean or slim down. So there's a different verb for it tara uh -huh. and you can also there are also other verbs like you say when a person is slim so you say ode nege nege or ode ngelega or depending on the dialect there are other words you can use his sister is also slim but his brother is a bit fat. One naya wanyi wakwara obere ahu mana one naya wuke buturu ibu. Here we can see the suffix kwa. Kwa is the suffix for also. Also. So when we say mwekwara, also has kwa. When you want to say also came, obya. He came is obiara. He also came obiakwara. So here kwa is the suffix for also. And we also suffix r a to make it stative. So mwekwara also has. Another word that I want you to note is but. That is mana. The conjunction mana. Mwanewanyi mwekwara. Oberahu mana but one name okay but but 
his brother is a bit fat. His sister is also slim, but his brother is a bit fat. One and one in Wakara Opera home, and one and one able to able. So, sibling is one. One is child, one is child, ne, ne is mother. So, sibling is child of a mother. My sibling, the child of my mother. Then, sister is one, one. So, one is female or woman so my female sibling is my sister so his sister one yeah one one and one you can see the syntax one and one if you say one one yeah you will be clearly understood that is correct as well but the widely used syntax is one and one his mother is called Adama, she is a teacher, and his father is called AJK, and he is a musician. Anna bought near Adama, Obo, Onye Nkuzi, Anna bought near AJK, Obo, Onye Egu. When we say Obo, Onye Egu, Obo, Onye Egu could mean he is a musician, or could also mean he loves music. So we can say on a eti ego to be specific so on a table means he's a musician and will not be misunderstood so ana akbo nnaya adama obo onye nkuzi ana akbo nnaya ejike ona eti ego okay ngwan ka odinu bye